Uh, welcome, thank you for coming. You learned everything you never wanted to know about the immune system tonight. Uh, and hopefully a few things you wanted to know. My name is Hans Gruen. Most of you know me. I'm one of the attorney physicians here in town. And um, if you talk about the immune system, obviously it's a huge world, but practically I want to send you home with an understanding how you, number one, can strengthen your immune system, how, number two, what you can do if a cold knocks on the door in the first 12 to 24 hours, and what in general, how the mind ties into that, how diet ties into it, how lifestyle ties into it, and like uh, often with our topics, obviously, the immune system is connected to the rest of the, of the world, okay? To some extent, we'll talk about that, and you'll understand what that means. Uh, let me ask you, how often do you get sick in a year? Meaning sick, um, colds and flus and this kind of stuff, viruses. So we need two and four, we have the world. So is that good or is that bad? Should you get sick at all? What's your thinking? Huh? Yes. You should what? Get sick. Get sick. Yes. Where are you come from? <laughs> can't be LA. Can't, can't be LA. All right. So, it's not necessarily bad to get sick. You know, the idea that we always should stay healthy is actually not a healthy idea. And next time, um, sometimes in November, the date is outside, I will talk about European biological medicine, which actually has a very profound understanding about this rhythm we need to go through in order to stay optimally healthy. So not getting sick at all is not necessarily a good thing because new stuff comes our way, new viruses come our way which our body never encountered. And getting sick occasionally once or twice a year is therefore just a way of the body reacting to the new stuff. Yeah? Just like you hear something that's emotionally upsetting to you and freezing and not reacting to all, at all to that is probably not a healthy reaction. Yeah, you have to not bottle it up, you have to let it out, and after a while, it will not be such a big deal anymore. Same thing in a certain way with the immune system. Now, obviously, if you get sick frequently, three, four times, there's a message in the bottle. Yeah, and the message is your immune system is trying to tell you something, which means it tries to get your attention. And getting your attention, then you have to figure it out, or hopefully with the help of a good practitioner, able to figure out what the heck is going on. So if we start very at the beginning, what does a virus do? Well, viruses use our genetic apparatus, our cells, to reproduce. They're dependent on us. And they sneak into our cells and then use the machinery there uh, and occupy the machinery to produce copies of themselves. Okay, now there is, just to preface that, there is a certain window of opportunity because between the virus attacking you wherever, through wherever it enters, uh, until it disappears in your cells, you have about 12 to 24 hours where the virus is vulnerable. After that, your chances of aborting it go down significantly. The only thing you can do then is try to shorten your cold and your flu. So where do you get a virus from? Well, obviously from someone else having it. And uh, the way that works is you shake hands with someone, like with your doctor, <coughs> not with your doctor, and you, know, and you catch some viruses. You, somebody sneezing, and the virus is in these aerosols, which slowly filter down, and then somewhere cover the desk, which you, which you touch, or the furniture, or, or so on. Okay? And then you get that stuff, uh, you rub your eyes, uh, you touch your mouth, uh, one of your mucosa, or someone sneezes at you, at you, obviously, and then these viruses start uh, infiltrating your mucosa and finding its way into your cells where it wants to be and you don't want it to be there. All right, so that's what it does. And um, viruses are obviously very specialized to do that. Now, just to make that clear, many people still have kind of the idea which Pasteur had, the, who is the founder of the germ 
theory that germs do make us sick. Okay, and it was an unbelievable scientific accomplishment in the second half of the 1800s that he figured out these germs, they're there. Um, he's, on the way, he saved the French silk industry at that time, who had actually, uh, their silk industry, their silk worms got infected by some bacteria. Uh, he was a national hero, and he came up with this germ theory that bacteria at that time, they didn't know about viruses yet, but it's the same model, bacteria do make us sick, the cause of all evil. And at that time already, one of his contemporaries, um, um, I forgot his name right now, uh, said, it's not so much the bug, it's the terrain. Yeah? It's not so much that the bug makes you sick, the virus makes you sick, it's actually more your susceptibility. Yeah? The terrain is on what soil the virus falls, yeah? and the soil is you, your bug your totality, your mind. And that is a much, much better model, you know, because in a certain way we all believe it's these bugs that do us in, they don't. You know, it's a widespread myth that TB disappeared once antibiotics were invented. But if you really look at the statistics, 90% of TB disappeared in the 30s and early 40s due to increased hygiene. So the immune system of people got better, the nutritional status of people got better, uh, and that then made them more resistant against the bugs. Okay? Because if you look now, for example, should you work in a big office, and some of your colleagues has a bug, and you get it one to four days later, that's normally the incubation time between this thing getting to you and your body reacting, one to four days, that's way too fast. But nine other colleagues don't get it. Yeah? So where is this germ theory where everybody's been exposed to it? If you follow the germ theory, doctors should be sick all the time, and they're not. Okay, so it makes actually no sense. Actually, in the very contrary, you know that educating children in a way that you try to keep them sterile, in a sterile, low, bacterial, low, um, low bacterial environment, very clean environment, actually is not healthy. Because it does not train the immune system. And having some flies in the house, which just give you enough amount of bacteria as they crawl over the landscape, so that your immune system is able to handle this stuff from outside and keeps alert, is actually healthy. Yeah? So the idea, the American idea, comes out of this country, that we should not uh, expose our kids to bugs because germ theory, bugs are bad, backfires, these kids are highly susceptible, have, have much more al allergies and what have you. So susceptibility, yeah? the terrain, and that obviously then leads to the question, if you get more frequent infections or even an infection at that very moment, what is happening with you? Not what is happening with a bug, and I got this extremely aggressive bug. Well, rarely and occasionally there is an extremely rarely bug. I don't want to dismiss that. But it's still the susceptibility. Yeah. Every normal, common influenza virus every year, every self-respecting virus in America kills about 30,000 people. Okay? The H1N1 viruses kill much less people in that year. Why does it kill so many people? Because they are susceptible. You know, you have to die from something, and dying from a virus is one way of dying, if you're old and depleted and at the end of your rope. Do you see what I'm saying? So there is a certain function for viruses that's not necessarily bad. They have a, a ton of other beneficial viruses because they help us genetically to exchange some genetic information, but have you all kinds of interesting things, um, but that goes in a totally different direction. So what do you do? You caught a virus, you start sneezing, you have a cold, you have achiness, you have fever, um, you, you're congested, you feel lousy, you're tired, you're depressed. Well, you have to obviously do something to strengthen your immune system. It's very important that you get a sense of, is this a bacteria, potentially, and potentially a heavy bacteria where you actually should take antibiotics? Or is it a virus? Okay, and this distinction in medicine is tricky 
to make sometimes, it's not totally clear, but medicine constitutionally errs, errs profoundly on the side of this is a bacterial infection. Yeah, you know we overprescribe antibiotics up the gazoo, which is the reason why many of our kids have allergies and messed up guts and actually low immune systems long term. And often we get recurrent infections because the antibiotic destroys the friendly bacteria in our gut and the gut is where the immune system lives. We talk about that in a moment. And uh, then you're susceptible to the next bug. And here it goes. Okay, the downward spiral. So sometimes it's hard to do, but the classical muscle aches, you having sinus congestion, some sore throat, uh, bronchitis, is normally not a bacterial infection. A bacterial infection is either, you know, ear infection, you have it in the right ear. You have fever, it's fussy, it's extremely painful, right ear, nothing else. You have a strep throat, you have swollen lymph nodes, you don't cough, you don't have nasal congestion, nothing. Strep throat, okay? One thing, one area. You have sinusitis, pussy, headaches, fever, the whole sh no, no cough, no sore throat, no even no muscle aches. You get that? You have bronchitis, bacterial bronchitis, then you're only coughing green mucus. But even there, you know, the AMA says in most cases, do not use antibiotics because it doesn't make a difference. Okay. Now the problem is, and many people do that, that you know the bug is there, they have symptoms, they feel lousy, one day fine, two days fine, three days fine. After five days they get afraid, they give to a doctor, say, I feel horrible, I need to do something. They give them an antibiotic on day five, and on day six they start to feel better. Okay? And that confirms in their mind the idea that this now was a bacteria, and the next time they have the same thing, they might not wait for five days, they might as well on day one call the doctor and get an antibiotic. Okay? But the fact is that normally in order for the immune system to work itself up, and meet that viruses, virus, and then destroy it, it takes it exactly five to seven days, okay? So after five to seven days, normally, it would have gotten better anyway, yeah? Which leads back to the old saying that uh, the virus normally takes about seven days, and with an antibiotic, it only takes one week. <laughs> okay, so, so you have to be very careful because otherwise, you're gonna harm yourself more than you do good, okay?